All right, so I wanted to show this plant that's here in front of me here. This is American elderberry, the Sambucus nigra. This is a plant that I have a lot of in my landscape. Um, you know, in nature, you find this plant commonly like in roadside ditches or on the edges of wetlands. Um, you'll find it in any kind of like disturbed canopy gaps and like forested wetlands. You'll find it in just a huge variety of habitats. Um, but it tends to like areas that are kind of disturbed edge habitats. Um, in terms of in the landscape, be it for permaculture applications or in my case in the native landscape, this plant is just, it's outstanding. It's an outstanding plant. Um, it is a extremely vigorous grower. It's very tolerant of well, just a wide variety of conditions. I live on, my property was a sand hill. I mean, this is like scrubby flatwoods where my property, you know, historically on this property, you know, and this is typically associated as like a facultative wetland plant, but it has thri it thrives here at my house. Um, it blooms in the springtime and in the fall too, it'll bloom sometimes, but it does make an edible berry. You know, elderberries are commonly known and, you know, people take elderberry supplements for your immune support and stuff like that or make elderberry syrup and jelly. It's actually really good. I've, I really like elderberry uh, syrup. Um, right now, these plants are, I have several plants and they're all, a lot of them are in different stages of uh, blooming right now. The flowers have a real like mild fragrance to them. And the bees absolutely love these flowers. I mean, this these plants will just be swarming with honeybees on a nice, like, sunny, warm day, which we're going to get several of here in the next uh, next week or so. As again, you can see, there's quite a few blooms coming up. So one of the most interesting things, and kind of the reason why I planted this plant, I chose elderberries as one of the plants I wanted to put in my landscape early on, was because they're vigorous they grow fast and one of the things that I needed in my landscape was shade this was everything you see in front of you was a lawn you know two three years ago in a little bit this was just a completely barren lawn um, I needed shade I wanted shade so I planted you can see here this elderberry that's above me here, it's about 10 to 12 feet tall now. And we can go down and see the stem, the base of it. There's the base of it. But all these gray stems, all of this elderberry that you can see out here, there's, I don't know, there's 30 other stems out there, all the way out there to the edge by the sidewalk. All of that came, is this plant shooting runners out and sprouting up i mean there's runners it goes 15 feet almost in every direction out these ones go out mostly but you can see all these small ones down here along the ground this is all from this plant for the most part from this one mother plant and that's amazing i mean that might be seem like a bad thing but this plant has filled up this whole area and it has made a canopy. It's made a canopy. So now there's this whole microclimate that exists underneath this. And I can deep mulch that and it'll pop up through that mulch and I can grow things under it. And it can take, it likes the full sun. So it, I prune them up and make this canopy. And like, if I turn around here, I'll turn around slowly here. You can see this right here. This is another big one I have here. This one's huge. This one's like, uh, I don't know, it's probably 
well over and back up here see the top of it there's the roof I mean it goes up four or five feet higher than the top of the roof so this one's solid 14 15 feet tall and probably four inches or so at the base down there and this one also has a lot of root crown shoots that come off of it but this one tree is an overstory for this whole entire area over here so it shades <laughs> this tree is shading over this beauty berry this privet cassia and this wild coffee all this this whole area up here is shaded in the spring and the summer when we get our really hot temperatures and the overhead sun all of this area is shaded now and i can grow ferns and everything underneath the shade of this big elderberry so elderberries have a really weak wood so this tree could easily blow out in a bad storm but we've had a couple tropical storms and it's still intact it's blooming right now vigorously um, again it's a really attractive plant for pollinators um, these plants one of the things i really like about them too is you know this one and that one over there the only two i planted i only planted two elderberries and i have elderberries everywhere now you know there's even one all the way over here you can see this big one over here that's probably eight or nine feet tall and that's just a sucker from one of these other two that came up over there but all i did was you know i went <laughs> an area in a ditch by my house and i just pulled up one of the runners that had some roots on it just a root about that big around a piece of a root just broke it and pulled it up out of the ground and buried it right there and that was like two and a half years ago and that's what i have now i have this 15 foot tall shade tree <laughs> for the rest of my garden you know and again if you're if you're growing in like a food forest or something like that and you need something that you can establish help to establish some microclimate and start to stabilize things this elderberry just works fantastic and it makes edible fruit and it attracts tons of pollinators so it's it's kind of like the perfect plant for your native landscape and again if you're starting off understand this plant likes to send runners some of them run more than others i don't know why i have a huge one in the backyard that's probably eight inches in diameter and it doesn't do that you know, if you let them grow in totally full sun all by themselves, they'll grow a big rounded shape and they'll get real, real big. You know, maybe, um, you know, 10, 12 feet tall or more and, and twice as wide. So they're, again, Sambucus nigra is the American elder, American elderberry. If you're starting a native landscape, it is an absolutely outstanding plants one of my like foundational plants out here particularly in my front yard where I'm so exposed I'm totally exposed on the north and west and the south side so I needed something that could shade and hold moisture by creating shade so American elderberry, check it out.